Lord, we thank you for joining us together, and we thank you for that wonderful worship that we have in your presence and in your way. Lord, we thank you that we can just come to you and just rest in your peace of worship, and during that worship, you just help us to forget about everything and focus on you. Lord, we thank you for your wisdom and understanding for this message, that it will water us, and it will water us real good. That way we will just grow and be rooted in you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 And 1 Corinthians 3 is where we're going to be studying on. We're going to be studying on how to build a solid foundation. All right. And that's 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 3. Okay. Good. And, and I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as the babs in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it, and even now you are still not able, for you are still carnal, for where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, you are not carnal, and behaving like mere men. For when one says, I am a, of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? All right. So what is he teaching here? What do y'all receive in here before we get started? What is, what is it that you think he's, Paul is trying to teach his congregation? You ever had someone show up for church week after week and they're just kind of sitting there and when they go home they're really not changing anything in their lives? Their lives still kind of remain the same. They're not reflecting anything to be a light. They're just going about their regular day. They're not trying to put God in it. They're not talking about God. They're not applying what they're learning. Paul was teaching here, he says, like babies, you know. It's like babies. You start off young just eating and feeding off the milk. Just feeding off of what people will give you and what people will do for you and what people will teach you. But you're not really trying to apply anything because you're still a baby, right? You still need to be held and fed and nurtured and loved on because you don't really understand whether you got church hurt, never knew about God, whether no matter what the case is. He said he's trying to teach them that at some point you're going to eat solid food just like every baby will. And what happens whenever you have that baby? And then they start to crawl on their own, right? Right. And then they start to walk on their own. And then right. when they fall, somebody's there always to pick them up. Does this sound familiar? Yes. God's picking us up. When we fall, He picks us back up. And we can run back to the Father. But eventually, eventually, we have to eat that solid food. And we have to have that solid food so that we can grow and take care of babies of our own, right? Mm -hmm. But He said, no matter what, you're not of Apollo, and you're not of me, and you're not of Paul, you're of God, no matter what. He teaches us in 1 Corinthians 3 that no matter what, we are of God. And God is powering people like me and Paul and Apollos and Pastor Lynn, He's, and, and all of you, because y'all are a pre preacher more than y'all think you are, because you go out in the world and people will receive way more from you than somebody that stands here. One, they won't come here. Because they're scared of the things that they've witnessed with other places or in their own lives. But you must understand that eventually that milk, what does that milk do? If you just drink milk all the time as a human, what happens? No food, just milk. It just comes right out of you. <laughs> yeah, it just it comes right out of you, right? <laughs> Yes. And the same thing happens with this. If you just go in and you just receive the milk, it's going to go right out of you. That's it. Come it's on. not going to stay. Solid food stays. Amen. When you decide you're going to have it and you're going to use it, it's meant to give us that energy, that gas power. If you look in Matthew 7, 24 through 28... <coughs> Well, from Jesus. <laughs> yes, Matthew 7, 24 through 28. Anyone you it's a uh, New King James Version. Okay. And he just kind of confirms this in, in the title in that in that section, it says it all. It says, build on the rock. In most of your Bibles, it probably says that. Build on the rock. 
And that's Matthew 7, 24 through 28. Okay. Seven what? Seven, twenty-four, twenty-eight. Okay. It says, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken to him a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them with, will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell. And great was its fall. And so it was, when Jesus had ended these sayings, that the people were astonished at his teachings. His teachings. For he taught them as one having authority and no and not as the scribes. So he teaches. He always teaches. He didn't get out and scream at people and all that. And I'm not doubting anybody that does. He, I'm, what I'm getting at is wisdom. He teached in a way that people just left in awe. They wanted, they was like, wow, I didn't know that. Wow, I didn't understand that. Wow, now I receive that. I know what it means. That's solid food. That came straight from him, not the scribes that had preached before him, that whenever they finally did see him, they wanted to kill him. Because all the works that they have done didn't count for anything, because now their Savior is here, so I did all this stuff for nothing. They were actually mad, because they didn't want people to see who they truly were, that was covered by all these works and deeds and things of that nature, religious things, and they knew he would expose them, because he was speaking directly to them with love, and with compassion and with just simple terms. He didn't need the bells and whistles of everything else. He just wanted to teach and help people to understand how to go back home with him. And these types of teachings, he would always teach through Paul, also through this. You remember how bad Paul was? He was horrible. But yet he eventually teached and preached for Jesus and led people to Jesus and still did. And he done that from where? Mostly from prison. Mostly from prison. People say all the time, you, you're not good enough to preach, not to, well, yeah, they do say it to me. You know, but just in general, they say it to other people. You're not good enough to preach, you're a woman, you're this race, you're this this. Or they'll have these certain pastors that they think they're so mighty and powerful within their own church. When somebody preaches in their church, they'll literally make them preach in a different area. Have you ever heard of something so absurd? It's ridiculous. Have you ever heard of being baited by a church with school supplies and bills being paid and funeral arrangements being made? And so yeah, sure, our church won't get full like that because we're not going to do that. And I'm not going to sit here and get fearful whenever somebody doesn't tithe because that doesn't support me. Anybody that tithes supports Jesus. This, I don't get paid, y'all don't get paid. We all keep it pure because we don't get paid. I'm not downing anyone that gets paid. To do it because some people have the blessing of just doing that. And, I, and just I say it lightly because it's a big, big job. It's a huge job. But let it be a blessing. Don't let it be a fearful tactic that controls you and everyone in your, in your presence that you're with. We have to be very, very mindful that money comes from God. It don't come from us. We have to be very, very mindful that the Word of God comes from God. It don't come from us. We are just obedient servants, every last one of us, for God. And that's what He teaches. In 1 Corinthians 3, 5, and we'll be mostly in 1 Corinthians 3 today. Okay. In this title it says, Watering, Working, and Warning. And we go 1 Corinthians 3, verse 5. And it says, Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers, through whom you believed, as the Lord gave to each one? He's very clearly stating that. These people don't have power. Christians don't have power. Pastors don't have power unless the Holy Spirit is in us. Mm -hmm. And at least less we're working through Him. 
we're just obedient servants just like Jesus was, who came and He served. He says, I came to serve, why wouldn't you come to serve? And we're just letting everybody have this channel, this TV channel, this radio station, this vessel that speaks through us. You might hear my voice, you might hear Pastor Lynn's voice, you might hear your voice, you might hear your voice when you're speaking to your family and to your friends. But the voice is actually God. We're just being Amen. obedient to let Him work through us. And when you hesitate with that, what happens? They don't hear it. They don't get that blessing. They don't get to hear the Word of God because you hesitate because you're like, well, they're going to think I'm foolish saying those things. They're going to think that, well, you're always talking about God, Mom. You're always talking about God, Gio. You're always talking about God. Everything's God, God, God. Yes, everything's about God. When you fall and hit rock bottom like I felt, Hit rock bottom, trust and believe everything else is about God at that point. Because who was there when I fell and hit rock bottom was only God. And that's what's going to happen to you if it hasn't already. If you don't understand it and if you don't get it from the beginning. In 2 Timothy 2.19, it teaches us more on this. And that's 2 Timothy 2.19. And just a little background, this is when Paul was given the authority to Timothy and teaching him. And you want to read more on it. Like I said, when I when I bring up verses that's outside of that foundation verse chapter that we're going over, take those other verses and go study on them as an entirety in the whole chapter. That way you can have an even better understanding of what they mean. And that's 2 Timothy 2.19 in the New King James Version. I'm going to need some models up front. I think Collins and uh, Jeremy volunteered. <laughs> what you call them, assistants? I'll call y'all assistants. Y'all want to be my assistants uh, or my models or what? Which I want to y'all be models today? <laughs> yes. Some Jesus models. Okay. <laughs> Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands having this seal. The Lord knows those who are His, and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from inequity. So there we go again with the seal. Who is here with that message about the seal, showing that you're already sealed with the mark of God or the mark of the beast? Of course you can change that every day now. You can change that seal every single day now. But you're not going to stand in some line and be marked with a, a marker, right? We already know that now. So this is just an example of how we're sealed with God. Whenever you have something going on, that foundation stays solid no matter what. You're sealed, you're protected, you're guided. No matter what, you come back and, you, and there's no way to shake the seal. You're protected. Our mind might let us get distracted and our mind might let us fall, but guess who picks us back up? Jesus, Jesus God, yes, He always is there. But if you have this type of foundation here, that always is shaky whenever you have something. And as I say stuff, y'all going to have to see who can, who can pull them out without it coming out, okay? When you have something like, whatever one, it doesn't matter, y'all just take turns. <laughs> when you have something like a loss of work and you're like, what am I going to do? Collins, you say like, what am I going to do if I have a loss of work? And then you sit in there and you get a little shaky and you get a little foundation problem, right? You have an issue on coming here with y'all. And then whenever they have something where uh, my child got sick, they got they got COVID, and I don't know how to do it. Oh, 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 <laughs> But if your foundation is not built on the rock, oh, it's right. gonna fall. It's gonna fall every single time if your foundation is not built on the rock. I thought we could go a little longer, but <laughs> you're in Jesus name. In Jesus' name, your foundation will be strong. But it's just to help to put a visual to know that you're either protected by the seal of God, or each time a circumstance comes, whether it's a bad grade, or it's a somebody sick, or it's a bad health report, or it's a financial bind, no matter what it is, if you're pulling those things out constantly and you're shaky, you will fall without the seal of the Lord protecting you and guiding you in every single way. And it's just really, really important to understand that and really 
to visually see it because some people's like, I don't know what she means whenever you're just talking. And it's good to put something to it because next time you're in a situation where you get that call and say, work is slow or COVID hit and now we got to depend on the government because of unemployment or whatever the case is, you'll know that you can stand on solid ground because that money never came from you to begin with. In, Ju- in John, I was going to say June 14, it's in John 14, 6. I'll talk about it again. And that's John 14, 6 in the New King James Version. But the main thing is to understand that the devil, he's the one that comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus came so that we would have the way. Okay. So Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So what do you receive from this most of all? Even especially someone in Bible study. Like, what do you receive from this most of all? Is this one layer thick, or is this several different layers? Right. It says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. What is one way that he's the way, the truth, and the life? He shows you the way to get where you're supposed to be, and the truth, he speaks only the truth, and he shows you the light that you're supposed to be leading to. Right, to lead to. And another way is that He came and He died for us. He came and He died for us to show us that He's the only way to get to God. That's correct. And the other way is that, yep, to the Father, right? To the Son. And the the other way is that He's showing us that the only way to speak to God is through Him. He's showing the only way to speak to Him is through Him. But the, the one that just gets me the most, and I think it's because I learned it from studying so intensely, is that Jesus, God literally came down here and he did it. And I say this all the time and I say it, he did it. He did every single way, every single thing that you possibly can say, well, she did or he did, so I did or if this wasn't happening to me then I wouldn't have done it or any excuse or reasoning that we possibly could have. As you read in this Bible, even wages, right? We learn in them Matthew 20. Even when you say, I work so hard, I can't believe I didn't get paid right. Go look in Matthew 20. No matter what the circumstance was, picked on, gossip, beaten, killed, whatever the case may be, he came and he did it and he did not sin in it. Right? Yes. And he is the way. He showed us the way in that. Yeah, I, I, I want to add <laughs> yeah. a little something. Yeah. You see, until he died on the cross, God and man was at enmity with each other. So when Christ went on the cross, he took one hand, he took man's hand, he took the other hand, he took his father's hand, and he joined the two together. So if he had he not come between God and man, they never would have come together. Right. There was no other way. It took him to come and do that, to bridge the gap. So he took man by the hand when they raised him on the cross and nailed his hand and he took God's hand and joined the two together. And there is no other way. Amen. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> it's just so many layers. we got to understand there's so many layers to everything. That's why I try to go through the Ten Commandments with y'all. It's so many layers. And even if you said, well, Jesus came so the Ten Commandments aren't for me. If you're that type of person, that's fine too. Because he says to love one another as you love yourself and him. And the only way you can do that is by not committing those Ten Commandments. Yes. So you can't get around it. It only fills in those gaps. The, the gaps that say, well, it's personal time on, on um, stealing or not tithing is stealing or... Or with adultery, that it's not just uh, actually physically having sex with somebody else. It's looking at somebody else and wanting them like that. You know, it's to know that no matter what, you have no excuse. And that's what he's teaching us. The way, the truth, and the life is we got to be truthful first with ourselves, then with others. Because a lot of times we're not truthful with our own self, and we make up excuses for the things that we do and the reasons that we do them. And we just have to stop. I say it's better to just say, Lord, I don't want to do that yet. 
or your Lord, I can't do that yet, than to sit there and reason and justify and lie, and you're just digging yourself deeper and deeper. He rather your honesty because he already knows your honesty. He already knows you don't want to, you don't plan to, but he knows that you can. In one Corinthians three, six through eight. And that's 1 Corinthians 3, 6 through 8, the New King James Version. Is that stone and rain in here? That's what it sounds like. No. <laughs> oh. I planted Apollo's water, but God gave the increase. So then neither he who plants is anything, nor who waters, but God who gives the increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to what? His own labor. You can't hold me accountable and I can't hold you accountable if one of us are doing the right thing. We have to stand firm and say, hey, my thing is with you, and your thing is with him. I'm here to teach, and you're here to teach me. Y'all are here to teach me too. We're here to learn together in unity. But he's teaching here, Paul is teaching here that he planted, that God planted, and Apollo's watered, and God gave the increase. No matter what, no matter whose word or whose mouth it's coming out of, he gives that increase, and he gives that abundance. It's like a... A slideshow that you have whenever you're you're thinking back to a circumstance. You ever had somebody uh, hurt you or mistreat you, and the whole time you get upset about it, but yet you never realize you've had the warning signs all along. Just say in a relationship, and you're dating the wrong person or something, and you had the wrong the warning signs all along, but you kept you know you just kept ignoring them because you love and you got a heart that loves, and that's okay. But sometimes God's given us common sense. And warning signs and we just dismiss them and we keep putting expectations on ourselves or other people or you all of a sudden have somebody lost in your life and you're like man that person was so happy I can't believe they killed themselves I can't believe that happened and let me tell you something I know y'all know the person that we present ourselves to each other as nobody genuinely truly knows that whole person unless that person lets them know that person and and that doesn't rarely ever happen. That rarely does. I can't say possibly that. And maybe in couples and marriages, yes. But not in church members and not in family or friends or even a mother-daughter relationship. Sometimes we just don't know. And you know why that is? Because that person is so weak, but they're still protecting you. They're still protecting you. They don't want them you to know the pain that they're going through. They don't want you to know why their mind is scrambling out of control. They don't want you to know that they, they can't stop doing something, that they really want to stop doing. They, they're protecting you. They're constantly protecting you. And then all of a sudden they pass away and you're like, what in the world happened? I thought this person was that. And that's exactly why. Because you thought. You didn't know. And we just have to understand that our faith is in our words. We might say we're going through something, or I thought, or mostly those two words, I'm going through and I thought, speaks a whole lot of faith in us. Because your mind is like, I'm not stuck in it. I'm going through it. So all of a sudden, you don't realize the faith you have just in your own words by saying, I'm going through it. That's faith. Give yourself some credit for that. You're not saying, I'm stuck in here, I'm never going anywhere. I'm going through it. Be strong in that. And whenever you start saying stuff like, I thought, I thought, I thought, understand that is just your thoughts. If we can reverse that and pray for that person, if we have any inkling that they're going through something, God will help give them peace and joy in their heart again. And just mainly to protect them, because I know there's something, whether it's a chocolate cake or a drug or a phone or whatever. Did y'all learn anything with the fast that it helped give y'all wisdom with that fast from the phone? This week, did y'all do it? We do it every week. Y'all did it every week? <laughs> we do it every day, matter of fact. Well, good. And all you just the pick a certain time and I... Huh? 
Nobody raised their hand. You did it? Oh, it says that like for a fast, like you pick somewhere that you would normally play a video game. I ain't got a problem passing from a phone. Not just the phone. Say you would pass from, say they're electronic. So you have a phone, TV shows you like, or games you like. So we said, not say don't do it at all unless you got bold to do it. That's great. But say a certain time that you would do something like that to find comfort or escape from the world, you would not do that and you would go to God in prayer and go to God in teaching and go to God in that. And whenever you're sitting there, for whether it's taking a bath or sitting on the porch or, you know what Chloe did? She said when she goes check her mail, she won't look on the phone. Oh my yes. gosh. You know what happened to her though? <laughs> I God got her. She would. She lost. Just that one thing. I didn't tell her nothing. I didn't judge her. I said, okay, you know, kids with phones, I know. So, and she's not wanting to be on her phone a lot, but she wanted to be a smart aleck, and she wanted to say, well, from my walk to the house to the mailbox, which is long, I'm not going to bring my phone. I'm going to just look around, and I'm just going to talk to God, and, and it is a long walk, so I'll give her a little credit. Well, one day she brought the phone anyways. A uh, uh, grass snake went right across her feet. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and she didn't see it. She said, Mom, my heart started beating. I knew it was Jesus correcting me. She said, that could have been any kind of snake. Oh, I, said, huh? I said, you don't lie to God. Uh, you, know? uh, <laughs> you don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't lie to God. He's going to get you. So my point in all that is just take that time. It's not to... To do anything but just to have more time with him. To find that comfort and peace in him. And that way when you go play your video game or you watch the show or you whatever, play on your social media, you're doing that for fun. You're not doing that for comfort because God's your comfort. Amen. That's the point in it. That's why we did it. So you can try it this week. And y'all can keep trying it. <laughs> y'all gonna keep trying it. It gave me a lot of peace. My time always. Yeah, I had certain time limit, but it's just I did, you know, like go soak and look on the phone or something like that. So I didn't do that. That way I just have more peace.